Uh, hello everyone, I'm Dr. Amel Faramawi, Professor of Pediatrics in Shams University. The hepatology curriculum that you are expected to know as undergraduates will be covered in a series of three lectures. This is the first one in which I'm going to explain cholestasis in new needs and children. It's a prerequisite to revise the cells forming the liver, the blood supply, the portal circulation, different liver functions, as well as bilirubin metabolism from your previous studies. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to recognize the patterns of liver disease, to define cholestasis and compare between direct and indirect hyperbilirubinemia, to identify the causes of neonatal and childhood cholestasis, to assess for the potentially treatable causes early, to be able to approach a case of cholestasis and to know the management plan. When the hepatocytes are exposed to injury due to any cause, there will be tissue damage with the release of liver enzymes into the circulation. Four enzymes are of clinical importance. The ALT alanine transaminase that presents mainly in the hepatocyte cytoplasm and in very low concentration in the muscles AST aspartate transaminase presents in the hepatocyte cytoplasm and mitochondria and also present in many other tissues including skeletal and cardiac muscles and red blood cells. Gamma GT gamma glutamyl transferase originates from the biliary epithelium and hepatocytes. Alkaline phosphatase originates from the canalicular membrane of the hepatocytes as well as other tissues, mainly the bone osteoclasts. These are the normal values of liver enzymes according to age. The level of liver enzymes reflects the rate of destruction of hepatocytes. The higher the levels, the more massive the destruction. It's important to recognize the pattern of liver disease, whether primarily hepatocellular or cholestatic, in order to prioritize the list of differential diagnoses for each patient. The ALT, AST are markedly elevated in primarily hepatocellular disease, while the GGT, alkaline phosphatase, are markedly elevated in primarily cholestatic disease, in addition to marked elevation of direct bilirubin. The liver is doing a lot of critical functions, synthetic, metabolic, storage, excretory, in addition to detoxification. In order to assess the function of the liver, we measure substances that are synthesized or excreted by the liver. These are the albumin, the INR, which is the international normalized ratio calculated from the patient PT and compared to a standardized control, as a reflection of clotting factor synthesis and the bilirubin as a marker of the excretory functions of the liver. The maintenance of blood sugar level is also considered a function of the liver through glycogen synthesis and degradation along with other hormones. Impaired liver functions indicate massive damage to the liver cells with few functional hepatocytes left so it reflects whether the liver is compensated or in failure. Cholestasis is a Greek word means stoppage of bile. So in cholestasis, there is impaired bile flow with the resultant of retention of all the substances that should be excreted in bile in addition to lack of bile function. Clinically, the patient will present with jaundice due to high level of bilirubin. There are two types of bilirubin, the indirect bilirubin and the direct bilirubin. Elevation of any of them will manifest by jaundice. You can distinguish between them clinically from the color of urine and stools. And lab-wise, if the direct bilirubin is more than 20% of the total or more than 2 mg per deciliter, this is cholestasis or direct hyperbilirubinemia. You have to recognize which type of bilirubin is elevated as each one has a totally different differential diagnosis. 
while indirect hyperbilirubinemia is more common and sometimes physiological as in case of physiological jaundice or benign as in breast milk jaundice, direct hyperbilirubinemia is always pathological and indicates liver disease. It should be clear that the recommendations of the American Academy of Pediatrics is that any infant with prolonged jaundice more than two weeks should be investigated basically by fractionated bilirubin then to proceed accordingly. Bile stasis can occur at any level between the hepatocytes and the ampulla of water. At the level of hepatocytes, cholestasis may occur due to failure of excretion of bile constituents from the hepatocytes in case of defect in the transporters concerned with this excretion. Cholestasis at the level of bile canaliculi occurs in case of hepatitis or storage disease due to swollen hepatocytes. At the level of interlobular bile ducts, cholestasis can occur due to paucity of interlobular bile ducts, whether syndromic or non-syndromic. These three levels constitute the intrahepatic causes of cholestasis. Cholestasis also can occur at the level of extrahepatic bile ducts, as in case of extrahepatic biliary atresia and cholidocal cyst, and these are the extrahepatic causes of cholestasis. So, cholestasis can be due to intrahepatic causes, which account for two-thirds of the cases in which the extrahepatic biliary system is patent and can be due to extrahepatic causes of cholestasis, which account for one-third of cases in which the extrahepatic biliary system is blocked. Sometimes they are named the medical causes of cholestasis and surgical causes of cholestasis as the latter is treated surgically. It is difficult to differentiate between intrahepatic and extrahepatic causes of neonatal cholestasis clinically, but there are some clinical clues could be helpful. As in intrahepatic cholestasis, the infant appears ill, not growing well, with hepatosplenomegaly, stools sometimes pigmented, while in extrahepatic cholestasis, infant appears well, growing normally in the early phase with acolic stools and firm hepatomegaly. Well, this is the end of the first segment in this lecture. In the next segment, you will know more details about the causes of neonatal cholestasis, cholestasis in older children, what are the treatable causes that must be diagnosed early for better outcome, and the clinical findings in cholestasis.